Hey guys, it's May May and welcome to part four of our mini album. Can you believe we've gotten so far so quick? I think it's been awesome. Now we're getting to kind of the fun part, kind of the, the decorating part. And I want to show you where I'm going to start today. So because we made this with paper bags, we have this section, if I can get my fingers in there, that we can put tags in. So that's what I want to work on first. Now, you can put two tags in here. Let me show you what I mean. Because you have this little separation between these two, you could put a piece of cardstock between them if you wanted to. You don't have to. Some people do that, but these pieces will keep these separate. So if you want to put two um, pieces in each one, you can. I have found that my book is getting thick enough, so I don't want to over bulk, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to keep that from happening with these guys. So what I'm going to do is just put one Slot one little slider in each pocket. Okay. I also cut them so that it would go all the way in. And in my bag, I found that they work better in the front side of the bag versus the back side. The reason is down here, we did some glue in and we stuck some stuff here and we've made this kind of stiff, but this back side, we didn't really do anything to. It's actually the front side. So you can put your little um, pieces in there. Now, these pieces measure, I need to tell you because I have forgotten. Don't worry, all the measurements will be in the blog post, but let me just double check this. Eight and a half by four and three quarters. And that's going to be what I put in. I'm going to put one in each bag in the, in the side that is not the stiffest. You'll understand what I'm saying because when you start messing with this, you're going to notice um, like one side is going to be stiffer than the other. This is the one that I put a flap in so it's going to be stiffer on both sides. Let's just see what happens. There we go. So you'll decide which side of the pocket to put it in. Okay. The ones with the flaps are going to be a little bit different because they're going to be stuck together. Okay. So you see how that side stuck together, but you'll still be able to pick which one of the sides is the easiest for you to slide them in and out of. Now, one thing I think you should do, go ahead and do this ahead of time, is round the corners of these. The reason for that is they slide in and out so much easier when you take some of that bulk off the end. So I'm just going to use my little corner rounder. And I can probably do three or four of these at a time. I'm going to do the half inch because that's my favorite. But you could do the half inch or the one quarter that's on here. And I'm going to go ahead and round all four corners. I just think you get a better um, slide in and out when you take those little pointy corners off that tend to grab. I'm loving seeing your photos of this album and how far you've gotten so far. You guys are sharing them on social media. You're sharing them in our Facebook groups. You're sharing them on Instagram. I think it's awesome. So keep doing that. I like seeing it. The other thing, I told you I wanted to try to keep the bulk down on these pieces because of how full the book is already getting. Here's my plan. My plan is to stamp on here instead of mat. A lot of times I would go through and mat all these pages, but I think if we stamp them, we'll be in better shape. Also, I went through my scraps. <laughs> this is going to be funny. I had like these pieces left, these scrap pieces, right? So I took my two inch scallop circle punch and all my scraps, I punched out one of these circles. See how I've just punched them from all of these pieces. I got as many as I could get out of here. And these are going to be, and I'm going to throw this away now. I'm done. I've done all I can do here. You may not want to throw it away. That's up to you, but I have, I feel like I've done very well with that. So here are my little circles. I'm going to use these for my pull tabs at the top of this page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eyeball center them this way, but I'm going to use one, the middle section of scallops to line up on the edge of the page. And I'm going to glue these guys back to back, sandwiching them at the end of our tab. So this will be the little pull piece that we pull it out of the book with. Let's put one on. I'm going to use my art glitter glue because I just don't feel like messing with tape. I feel like it slows me down. I'm going to put glue on this guy and try to get it to the edges without too much because you do want it to stay on. You know, you want it to be on there real well. Plus, it gives me a little leeway to slide this around. Just like that. I'm gonna put glue on half of this guy and then sit it on top of that one. And then I'm just going to sandwich this together. And this will be my little pull tab. Just get that lined up. Ooh, I went crazy with the glue. That's okay, it dries clear, it dries matte. I'm just gonna kind of pull it out to the edge there. Just rub that in. So that's how we're going to pull these out of the book. I'm going to do that to all eight of my pieces the same way. 
So take one of these dudes, put some glue, like so. This guy up, and I'm eyeball centering. I'm not too concerned. You don't even have to center. You could run them up, down, like that, and not have them all in the same spot. I'm just going to put them all in the same spot. I think it'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to keep going and glue all these down. So there we go. They're all done. I did pretty good. They're pretty uh, centered on each other, but I really did just eyeball that. I wasn't too stressed about it. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could move them so that they were staggered. You would just have to move them on the piece, but I didn't care about that. I think coming out there is just fine. The other thing I want to do is I want to do some stamping. Again, I'm trying to keep this flat because I don't want to add bulk. So I have gone into this stamp set, which is called Oh Snap, and I've taken the little picture frame here, and I'm going to use that as like a guide for where I want to put some pictures because I'm hoping to print out a bunch of like smaller like Instagram photos. And so I'm going to stamp two of these in here, and I'm going to do a border of some leaves, and I'll show you what that's coming from too. I'm going to do that from this stamp set called Blessings, and I'm going to use these leaves at the bottom. It's my plan, and my plan is to kind of run it up the sides like this so that I can still have my two frames over here. I'm not sure if I can actually. I'm going to see. Let's play with it and see what we get. Let's start with the leaves. So I've got three of those, and what color? I think I want to do, oh, I know what I want to do. My favorite color is Habanero from Versafine. I'm gonna use this guy because I think it'll show up really pretty on this paper. So I'm gonna ink up this leaf. And I may mix the colors, I'm not sure. I'm gonna come down here to this edge. I just wanted to have a little fall feel to it. Let's do mix the colors, let's get some more. Let's do toffee and let's do a green. Let's do Spanish moss, that'll be cute. Okay, so let's do green on this dude. Put you here, just on the edge of the page. And then let's do, ooh, better clever that, I'll have my arm in it. Let's do toffee on this guy. And he's just gonna live right here. Cool, so I got some color and some fall there. Then I'm going to go ahead and do my um, photo frame. Oh yeah, I can get two here, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I'm gonna do each page exactly the same. The reason for that is I like to do things assembly line and also because I think it's gonna be cute and it will get the job done, you know? Because when somebody pulls these out, they're not really gonna be looking at the decorating so much on this as they are the photos themselves. All right, so I'm gonna ink that up really well. And I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up here as close as I can to this guy. And I'm using the, um, Fisker's Press, it's got some little feet on it so I can really get over there and it doesn't touch until I press because of these little feet. I really like this thing. So I've put one there. Now I can go ahead and stamp some of the sentiments from this stamp set in this little slot. I'll show you what I mean, let me grab it real quick. I made them so that these little words would fit inside that little slot of the photo frame, but I probably won't because I don't know exactly what the photos are gonna look like. So I'm gonna wait on that and then I will stamp them afterwards. I'll put some little sentiment in that little spot. I may even just write it with my handwriting because I do like to have handwriting and things. Look, that's super cute. So now a photo will go here and here and I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing on this side. I'm actually gonna do the same thing to all of them. So I'm just gonna run through and do those. So here you go, they're all done. I did the leaves down the side. I did the photos here. And I really, like some of them are gonna be upside down and some won't. I don't really care about that. It's not gonna matter. Cause when you pull these out and you flip them around like this, they'll be perfectly fine. So don't worry about that orientation. Um, actually, the way I have them laid, see, <laughs> there we go. So it won't matter when you pull them out because you'll look at them this way and then you'll flip them over this way. Either way will be perfect. Let me flip this guy around. And we're going to put these into the book. Now, I showed you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to let the, the bag itself kind of let me know. Like, because I have something glued here, this piece is going to slide better into the back or what is the front of the bag. So I'm going to put this one in here. And see, by cutting those, um, those corners into rounds like that, it really helps. Now remember this bag is adhered at the top because we have a flap in it, but I think this one's gonna live in the back. I don't know, it seems to, 
be opening better to the front. Nope, see it got kind of snug. So I'm gonna open the back and put this guy in the back. It seems like they slide in better on the part that it does not have this piece glued. So like here, it's, a, it's on this side, so I would put this, um, this matte piece in the back away from it. I hope that makes sense. It's just when we get to that part, we have some bulk and some paper kind of glued all together. My hand is totally in the way, I'm sorry. It works better on the opposite side of that. I'm probably over explaining, but this side has is, is got the piece that's heavy. So in this bag, I'm gonna put it to the back. Slide this guy in. They just go easier that way. Oh look, those matched. I caught on the back there. This one goes to the front because of where the piece is. This one I'm gonna put to the back. You should be able to get a lot of pictures in here, a lot of real estate in this bag, or in this bag mini album. How cute, right? I'm gonna close this down so you can see. So see how these are gonna stick out the end? And that's okay. When we planned, remember I told you, I told you I wanted it to show a little bit, but I made these covers so that it would cover about half of that. So I think that is perfect. And we can just pull these out and view the photos and then push them back in. This will get sturdier as you add more things to the pages as well. All right, now then, I'm gonna put the album aside for a minute because I wanna do some prep work. And let's look at how much paper we actually have left. These little strips right here, this is all of the 12 by 12 I actually have left. This is it. I'm still not getting rid of these. I feel like I might can use these in places, so I'm still holding on to these. And we have our cut-aparts and our stickers. I'm gonna put our stickers aside for a minute. We'll, we may get to those in this video, we may not. What I am gonna do right now is go ahead and cut all of these apart. Go ahead and get these ready to use in the album. So I'm just gonna get my paper trimmer and start to cutting. Now we're getting to the point in the album where it's decorating time and you guys love to see how to decorate the album. Well, these guys are gonna make things super easy because we're gonna use them for a lot of the color and the sentiment and things throughout the album. We're also gonna use them for the tags in the album, which I'm super excited about that because it makes life easy. It'll look fancy. It'll look like you spent forever getting all these little pieces perfectly matched but it does it for you. So I'm just gonna cut all the cut aparts apart and then we'll look at how many we have. So these are our cut aparts. We ended up with 12 of these because that was a whole sheet. If you remember, I didn't cut away from this sheet. I wanted to save all of these. I think these are gonna fit perfect. Look how cute those are. We ended up with, I think nine of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight of those. So these are perfect size too. Oh, we got eight of these because I used one on the front cover. I thought there were nine, so there's eight of those. This one is the one that I had to take some paper from and use the back, the plaid. So this one I only ended up with four, but I'm okay with that. We're gonna use all of this so it'll be perfect. Okay, let's start with these guys. I am going to use my angle punch and turn these into tags. If you don't have an angle punch, it's super simple just to cut the corners of these into a tag shape, but this punch makes life so easy because that is now gonna be a tag in our album. You might be wondering if you've never made an album before, like why are we making tags? Tags go into all those little pockets that we made in the album um, so that we can show off some more pictures. The other thing I'm gonna like about these is they all have this little pale plaid on the back. This is perfect for photos. So when you're putting photos in your album, these are the places you'll put the pictures or you might even jot notes. Whatever you want to do in your album, this is the place to do it. So these four, they're not done, but I want to show you where they're going to live so it'll make sense. I'm going to open this up. Okay, for example, this little tag would live right here. Isn't that cute? It's perfect. When you open this flap, you might want to add this one here. But that's what these little shallow pockets were for. And they're tight enough to hold them inside. And when you add a photo to the back, they get even thicker and they'll stay in there perfectly. So that's where those are going to live. But we need to do a little more decorating to them. All right, so I'm going to take all of these guys together and poke a hole in the top using my crocodile because I want to tie some either ribbon or baker's twine. I haven't decided yet. I'm big on baker's twine, but I think ribbon might be super cute in these too. 
let's look. So since I only have four, I'm gonna do a little fussing here. I'm gonna cut a length of this brown ribbon away, pretty good length, just because it's on this three strand spool. By the way, I get this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby at the end of the season, and I pick colors I can use all year, and that brown is one that I use in the fall a lot. So I'm just gonna set this aside for a minute. And I think I'm just gonna make some little ribbon pieces at the top to be like pulls. You could even just staple this on. You wouldn't even have to do what I'm gonna do, but I think this will be cute. So I'm gonna eyeball how long I want this piece to be. Something like that. Cut that top away. Then I'm gonna feed this through this hole we made. And I use the bigger hole on the crocodile. That makes this super easy to do. And I really don't care if they line up at the end. Let me trim away what I just demolished. I'm gonna come back with my fray check and seal these edges. You could seal them with glue as well, or you could heat them with a lighter if you have that kind of ribbon. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is take this little thin brown ribbon. Let me move this out of the way so it's not so messy. This little brown ribbon and put it underneath. And I'm gonna tie a knot at the top around that ribbon. I just think this will be cute. I'm not tying a bow. I find that when I tie a bow, they tend to come undone when people are pulling on things in and out of the album. So I'm not gonna fuss with a bow. I think this will be cute enough just to be a little knot, just like that. And then see, we've got this little pull tag. Let me get my fray check. So this is what I'm talking about for the ends. I buy this at Walmart in the Notion section. It's just called Fray Check. And what it will do is you just run a bead of it at the end of your ribbon and it'll kind of sink in and it will keep those ribbons from fraying once it's dry. It does have to dry for a minute. So I'm just gonna sit that aside and let it dry and that tag is ready to go. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to my other four. So here's the four big tags. Aren't they cute? You can see that my fray check is still drying. So I don't wanna put these in the book yet because if you do, sometimes that can kind of transfer onto the pages. So I'm just gonna sit these aside and let them dry while we work on the others. I love these, I think these are adorable and so easy to do. You can even do that same thing for gift tags. Like if you have some Christmas paper or birthday paper, whatever paper that has these cut aparts, you can totally turn them into gift tags. They work perfectly for that. Okay, let's get the book. We like to work in the book, right? Here's the thing, I love these pictures. I think they're super cute. I'm trying to decide if I wanna make this a pocket, these bigger ones where I slide these guys into them, but I don't wanna build too much bulk in the album because I feel like I still have to add photos and you can see that I'm pretty full at this point. I don't really mind if they kinda of bulk up, but I'm thinking I wanna keep the bulk kinda of down. So my thought process, process is I might use some of these pieces just as pretties and then add photos or journaling spots, which I love. And some of these you might could just flip over and journal on. I think I'm just gonna glue these into different places, but I think I'm gonna mat them first so they'll pop. See how they're kind of blending in? I want that to really pop. And if I'm spending this much time on the album, I might as well make sure I'm really happy with what I'm putting in it. So I'm gonna mat these, but I wanna go through and see the ones I definitely wanna use. As cute as he is, I think I would rather him be a tag in the book than a spot. So I'm gonna put him aside for a few minutes. And I love this that says it's finally fall. Wouldn't that be cute right there? Or even on one of the little mats. So I'm gonna use that one. This I love for journaling. You could put this anywhere. You could stick it inside here and write a note about the day or something about the photo. Even on one of these longer pages, you could put it on this side and then put photos over here to go with it. I'm definitely using that one. And let's see, I love this one too. I just think these guys are so cute. But what I mean by you could also make them tags is you can always, let me show you, you can always put one tag in, okay, and then add another one on top. So you can have two tags, no problem. So some of these will become tags. It's cute, I'm gonna make that one a tag. And I don't know, we might put that one in somewhere. Now these little guys are perfect for adding anywhere. I can even cut them down and just use this section if I want to put them on here, and that's a good idea. Let's see how many I have that I can do that with. This little truck's adorable. I'm going to use him somewhere. See how cute that would be just kind of there, and this little tree will cut down. This little guy will cut down. They're so cute. That one's kind of big, but it's a perfect tag because you could totally put a picture on the back of these, like this one. Um, this one have to be a tag, I think. Look, that'll cut down and fit on there. Put that there. This will cut down. There's a tag. 
and this will cut down. That's cute. Okay, let's do that. I think I'm going to let this one be a tag because I think it's adorable with that little truck. All right, let's do some work on these guys. So these I'm going to glue into the book so I need to mat them. Let's start with that. So this should be super simple because to mat them, I'm just going to make them a quarter of an inch bigger than they are. They're four by four, so I'm just going to cut some pieces four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And I think I'm going to mat them in black. That seems to be a good color to pop behind them. I only have four of those, so I'm going to use a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm going to cut it in half at four and a quarter. And then I'm going to cut these down to four and a quarter. And I should be able to get all four out of one piece of black paper. Now I'm just going to glue these pieces onto these so that that border, let me pick it up so you can see it, so that border then shows around the edge. It's like a frame. So these are all matted and we're going to put those into the book. Let's find where we want those to live. So open this guy up. Oh, I left one in here. I was afraid of that. I need to mat that one and put it in. This guy I think will be cute wherever a picture is going to be. So I think I'm going to go something like this into this longer section and maybe put it right here because this way when I put pictures over here, I can journal what they were. So I definitely want to put that one like that. And because of the size of them, I'm just going to kind of center them in one end so that they have kind of that border of the paper behind them showing through. They actually fit really well. I think that looks really nice there. Okay, let's go back, or let's go this way. We'll find another spot for one of these pretty guys. This one's cute behind those stripes, and it says, I love you most of all. I love fall most of all. So if I could read, it says, I love you fall most of all. Put this guy in. Doesn't this make this easy? It looks like you planned this out so far in advance, but because we're using a solid paper pack, a whole pack that's all coordinated and all themed, it works so easy. Let's see where I want to put this. Oh, I want this pumpkin on this plaid. I just think that is so pretty right there. <laughs> Can you see that? It's so pretty. That's where it's got to go. I love this big pumpkin. Don't be afraid of covering up these spots either. I know you're thinking, but you're using the photo spots. You're going to have so many spots for photos in here. You probably won't even have enough photos, honestly. You'll have so many spots left. And then we've got one more that we've matted. I think I'm gonna put it to the very back. And I think I'm gonna put it over these pumpkins. The reason being is I think photos will show up better on this plaid. So I'm gonna put it over the pumpkins. I hope you're enjoying me telling you kind of my whys because a lot of you guys have asked me to kind of bring you on this process. I've been trying to tell you why I'm doing things so much. And I know it helps for me too. I like to know, well, why did you choose that? Why was your, what was your plan for that? But it doesn't mean that you have to follow my rules. You can do your own thing. This is your album. Okay, let me um, mat this one because I definitely want that one in the front. I'm going to find a piece of scrap that I can mat it on. See the difference it's like, it makes when you mat it? It just really makes it pop. It was cute before, but it blended in. And now those words, because we put that little border around it, just pop off the page. Okay, I had thought about, I've been sitting here thinking, I had thought about doing some trimming out of these guys and putting them in those spots we looked at, but these are perfect for making notes or putting little photos on. I think I'm not going to cut these down. That would be a lot of time as well, and the reason I'm not is I momentarily forgot about our sticker sheet because our sticker sheet is perfect for those pieces in the middle like this for us to be able to use these and kind of show off these stickers. So before I go spend all the time cutting all of that, I'm going to look at these stickers and see what I want to use on here. For example, this little lantern is adorable. Let's just see. See if I put this here, isn't that cute? I really actually don't want it there because I think it's too small. But look, you could add it here. I'm going to flip through till I find just the place for it. Here is cute. I want the purple. Oh, that's pretty right there. That's it. So see, I can put that right there. And then let me see what I can put above it. Look at this little happy together sticker. And see how super fast that decorated? Just like that. I love, love, love all of the stickers. Um, let's keep going and see what other stickers we can add. Let's see what we can put in these small sections. This little guy says cozy fall. It's perfect for right there. Look at this pretty piece on that stripe, but it might, oh, look how it pops over there. I'm going to put it on this side. So pretty. I think this is super cute. It says pumpkin patch you pick. Super cute. Let's see if we can put a pumpkin under it. I think this would be cuter than even a pumpkin. The pumpkin was a little bit too orange for this spot, but look how that pops off of there. Perfect. Let's keep looking. We'll find great little things to stick in here. 
that looks like a good spot, but I'm just gonna wait. I think I have another idea for those. Now, with these stickers, you can even come in here and add them. I'm gonna put as many as I want on here on these pieces, but I'm gonna save some for when I come back and put photos in. Because I'm gonna wanna put some around the pictures as well. So I didn't use very many stickers. <laughs> the reason is this. I really wanna wait till I get my photos in because I think these will be so cute. Let me show you an example. Let's say I wanna use this little pumpkin, right? And I have a photo. Let's say this is a picture that I wanna put in. And then in the corner, I wanna put this little sticker over the corner. I think that'll be so cute. So I'm gonna save these stickers for when I get my photos made. And I'm gonna tell you how that's gonna work. I want you to go ahead and know. I'm actually gonna use this for our Thanksgiving album this year. So we will have another video where I come back and we put those in together. So don't worry, you'll get to see that happen too. But I think I'm gonna wait on the rest of the stickers. Now remember how I told you I wanted to do something to these sections? Let me show you what it was. Remember those scraps that we had left over? I think this would be cute. Like here's an example, see how thin this piece is? I think it'd be cute if we came through and just kind of added these to this section just for some, just for a different color to add there. Put some little stripes in here. I won't need very many, but I've got these strips left over, so why not use them, right? So I'm gonna cut some of these down and we'll go through and just put those on. So I just cut a few pieces and I'm just gonna add them right here into these little binder pieces that we used as cover up. I just think it'll add a little bit of something. So right on the inside of that border, the border punch, it'll even make the punch show up better just for cutesy. They won't be pockets or anything, because remember, these pages don't, don't have a function, really. Or these pieces don't, they're just for looks. Let's see how cute, and see how that just added a little something. Let's do another page. I may only do two of them. Let me see. See, I put a sticker there, so I'm gonna skip that one, and I'm gonna do this one. So I'm making a decision. I'm ready to get rid of these scraps. I don't think I need them anymore. The next thing I'm putting in are photos. So I think I'm done with these. So now they can go, but that's all we have left of all that 12 by 12. That's cool. Okay, now I'm gonna make another decision and that is to stop here until I get my photos, except for the cover. So I'm gonna have one more video where I finish my cover because I wanna do a few things to it. But let's go ahead and load up what we've created today. So these guys are good and dry now. So I'm gonna go to my first little spot and I'm just gonna stick one in there like so. Then the next one, I only have four of these, so I'm gonna try to put them where there's not a flap first. And I'm gonna see if I can put them where I didn't put one of those. See like here, let's just see. I love this fall bucket list one. That is so cute, I can't wait to fill that out. And then I just need to put one where there's a flap. So since I have that there, I'm gonna go under this flap and put this one in here. That'll be cute. And see, now those little ribbons are gonna stick out too. I love that. I love when the album gets full. Okay, remember how I told you I was saving these to be tags? I'm gonna use them also. You can put them under or you can put them over the flaps because most of the time people are gonna pull these out before they lift the flap, right? And don't feel bad about doubling these spots. So put two in there. That's super cool, right? So probably in every one of these pockets I can go in and add one of these, and I will put pictures on the back of these and see how they fit so snug. That's good, you don't want them to fall out. So we have used everything except this sticker sheet and this front cover sheet, everything else is gone. And I think at this point, I'm going to stop and put and do my cover, but we'll do that in another video. But look what we've got, we are so far along. Look at all these little tags, we've got them in every one of the pockets, it is awesome. And when you sit down to show this and pull all these out and go, look here, and then on the back there'll be a photo. Oh, they're going to be so cute. I love doing these. And these come together so quick. These are not hard to do. Not hard albums at all. Yeah, and don't forget we have the flaps. So when you're showing, you'll take the little pieces out, show them the back, then open the flaps. You've got so many spots for photos and journaling. And these are perfect for an event because you can just take photos of whatever that event was and just load this whole thing up with them. It's gonna be perfect. I keep saying perfect. Anyway, I think this guy is. I hope you've enjoyed the process so far. The fifth video, or the fifth one will be me finishing the cover because I wanna add some stuff to it, maybe bling it up a little bit. So the fifth video will be finishing the cover. Then we'll take a break until after Thanksgiving to put the pictures in because that's when my pictures will go inside from my family Thanksgiving. All right, guys, thanks so much for following along. I'll see you back again on... Tuesday of next week to finish the cover off because we are cruising. Just a reminder, we're on our crafty cruise this week, so you won't see me again until Saturday. We'll have a um, travel vlog for you guys on Saturday. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.